Amen, amen. Come on, anybody excited to be in the house of God tonight? Come on, I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited that I'm here. The reason why is so we going through some things. Ain't that right, honey? Come on, but we know that the only one that can fix it is the Holy Spirit, is God. Come on. Come on, so I know that the word is going to be good tonight. I know that the word is going to be on point in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm up here for announcements, tithes, and offering. You guys ready for announcements? Anybody excited? I don't know about you. I just got excited, man. Man, I got excited. I'm excited. God's good. That no matter what, no matter what goes on, God is good. Come on, He's faithful too. Come on. I don't know, but I don't know if I'm preaching to anybody. But I'm preaching to myself right now. I believe it. Come on. So first, first, uh, uh, first things first. Announcements. So this Sunday, right? We have service. Everybody know that, right? Service Sunday. What time? Come on now, Belinda, you know it. 10 a.m. is service. Invite somebody. Bring someone out. Allow them to experience the same love that you're experiencing. Come on. The Bible says that you have received freely, so give freely. Amen? Anybody want somebody saved? Come on, it doesn't matter if your brother, sister, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, aunt, mom, uncle said no a thousand times. Let them say no a thousand and one times. Who knows? Maybe this one time they're going to say yes. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for people to get saved. Come on, it's time. It's it's time for for my for my loved ones to get saved. Amen. So since we're on this Sunday, right? This Sunday we also have baby dedications going on. Woo! I know Powerhouse OC uh, knows how to make babies because they just keep coming and coming and coming. So we are doing uh, baby dedications. If you want to dedicate your child, you can see Sister Josie for that. Sister Josie, where you at? So you can see Sister Josie for that. She's out there in the, uh, out there doing checking temps, I believe. Oh, she's back there. I see her. Um, next thing. Next Sunday, next Wednesday, right? Next Wednesday we have praise reports. So if you want to give a praise report, I mean a praise report. I don't want you to come up here and preach for 20 minutes. No, a praise report. Thanking God for what he has done in your life. Amen? Thanking God for this season. Come on, I don't know about you, but COVID didn't stop me from getting a promotion. Come on. God said, it doesn't matter what the situation in your world is going through. I'm still going to bless you. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. So you can meet up with uh, Sister Irene for that. She's actually in the back teaching. But if you don't know who Sister Irene and you want to give a, a two minutes, a two minutes praise reports. Come on. So if you want to come up here, just do a praise, praise dance for two minutes. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Amen. Two minutes praise, a praise report. You can meet up with Sister uh, Irene for that. But we are going to have snacks also, right? Little snacks we're going to be having. If you want to sign up for snacks, you can meet up with Sister Lena. If not, you can meet up with Liz if she's not around. Amen? I say the best for last. You guys ready for the best for last? So, God, oh, I got four minutes. So, I'm, I'm only bringing this up because it's the most amazing thing that we can do as a church, as a body, right? December 12th, we have an all-church outreach. Come on, we need more people to get excited. Not get excited, but go out there and do what God's called you to do, right? He said, go out to the highways and byways. In Luke, the Bible says that the king, a king at the time, sent his servant out to, to, to bring people in because he has a feast going on, right? He has a feast, so he sends people out. When he sent people out, the first people didn't come. And he says, they come back, the servant comes back to the king and says, yo, we don't, we don't, nobody wants to come. He says, go out and compel them to come so my house can be filled. So that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants his house to be filled. He wants you guys to, he wants the, the lost out there to eat. You know what the word compel means? T bringing them by force. <laughs> Bring them by force. Come on. Now, I'm not saying drag them by their hair or anything like that, but I'm saying tell them who Jesus is. We're going to be out there in this community. You could, there's, there's a box right there in the back. You want to give toys. We're going to give toys to the community. We're going to feed the community, and we're going to give prayer to the community, and I hope you guys are there. Don't miss out. Because if you miss out, that's on you. That's on you and God. But you do not want to miss out. When you see people out in the streets that are in bondage getting saved, you're going to be like, wow, I'm, this is the best thing I could ever do. You can be with my brother right here if you want to give uh, an offering, if you want to give. We're trying to raise $1,000 so we can keep continue getting toys. Amen. But let's get back to this community. You know what I mean? Show them that the king wants them at the table. Amen. All right, ties and offering. Matt gave, me, Matt gave me the three fingers. I'm going to read a short story, and the short story says this. 
I read this story before, but I love this story so much. It says, during World War II, my widowed mother supported her three young children on a school teacher salary that, that was meager. When I became conscious that we went without some desirable things because we don't have enough money, I asked my mother why she paid so much of her salary as tithing. I never forgot her explanation. She said this, darling, there might be some people who can afford along, uh, who can get along without paying tithing, but we can't. The Lord has chosen to take your father and leave me to raise your children. I cannot do that without the blessing of the Lord and obtain those blessings by paying an honest tithing. When I pay my tithing, I have the Lord's promise that he will bless us and we must have those blessings. If we are to get along, come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but tithing unlocks a spiritual gift, right? The Bible says that when you give, it is pressed down, shaken up, shaken around, runneth over. Come on. And if you don't believe in tithing, you can listen to uh, Evangelist uh, uh, David's message, and it, it just breaks down tithing. But I'm telling you, you're really missing out on a gift that God is trying to give to you. If you, have, if you stop tithing, start tithing. And see what God's going to do. Come on. God is so good. We just got to unlock what it is that he has for us. God has something for you. you know I mean, you, I, I say this all the time and I say it again. You can't, you can't reap a harvest on seeds you never sowed. So tonight, let's sow seeds. Anybody ready to sow seed? Amen. All right. Ways to give. PowerhouseOC.org. Text to give. is 714-710-1981. Or you can call at number 562-298-7145. Easiest way for me and my family, we text and give. It's just so easy. As soon as I get paid, I give them my first fruit. Amen? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, my God, for what you are doing in this service. Lord, I pray right now that, that your, your, these finances will go to further your kingdom, my God. I pray, my Lord, that your will be done, my Lord. I pray for promotions. I pray for increase in tithes and increase in offerings, my God, in every single person that is here. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give God a clap offering? Come on now. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. Uh, you know, um, today, I'll, I'll be honest, I had, I had a rough day today. I don't know about you, if uh, any of you had a rough day, but, you know, once in a while, you know, the devil tries to really rile me up, you know. He likes to mess with me, and, and uh, so, you know, I, the way I... Uh, I tell people how I get the devil back is I'll start going to outreach. I'll start sharing the gospel. And uh, you know what? That's my payback to him. Doing what God's called me to do, what he's called you to do. That's the best way to pay back the devil. And, you know, I, I started thinking about it all day long. You know, even when I got home, you know, I was... Um, just, I don't know, it was just something, that I wasn't mad, I wasn't angry, I wasn't hungry, I wasn't, you know, all this stuff, but it was something that was stirring up in me that just didn't sit right, you know, and as I started to uh, prepare for my message uh, uh, last night, you know, I got, God had still something, and today, you know, the, the devil's like, no, that's not really what he wants you to preach, that's not what he wants you to say. That don't make no sense, Steve. You know what? Let, let, let's go over here and preach some. And, you know, I, I started going, okay. You know, I started looking at some and, and putting it down. But there was just something 
that just didn't sit right with me. And even though, you know, the word of, the God, word of God is the word of God, there's times where you got to be obedient and just say, you know what, Steve, this is what I put in your heart and you need to fulfill it. So tonight, what we're, uh, uh, we're going to be out of Judges and we're going to be in chapter 6 and the title of my message is Mighty, mm-mm. we're going to fill in some blanks tonight, amen, but Tonight, we're going to be in in Judges chapter 6. I'm going to read a little bit, and um, it says here in chapter 6, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Median for seven years. And the hand of Median prevailed against Israel. Because of the Medianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had sown... The Midianites would come up, also the, Am- the Amicalites and all the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no uh, that for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents coming in numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And it says, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you drove them out because you and uh, before you and gave you their land also I said to you I am the Lord your God do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell but you have not obeyed my voice I want to stop there you know, there's a lot of things that are going on in this world right now. You know, they just mentioned, you know, that we're going into the purple tier and, and you know, it's getting worse and uh, COVID is just spreading out and all there. And people are getting scared. People are getting fearful. And you're going to see how many people will stop coming to church because they're fearful. But yet you're going to still see most of the same people go to Walmart. They're still going to go and eat amongst other people outside. But yet they're going to be scared to walk into a church. Many of you know, and, and it's, it's not, you know, I had gotten COVID, and you know, the, the devil instilled a lot of fear in me. He says, you know what, Steve, when they open up again, don't go back. You might get sick again. Steve, you need to stay away from your family. You need to stay away from uh, uh, everything that you were used to do. You need to stay away from work. And, you know, as I started, I started catching on. Going, you know what? I'm going to have to. You know, I was like looking up on Amazon, a full armor, you know, from the head to toe with a big old, you know, like, 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 like a plastic bubble, you know. And I was going to stay away from people. But that's what the devil wanted, for you to stay away. Because if he knows that if he can isolate you, he can get the best of you. The enemy is just waiting to get a hold of you. He's going to put circumstances in your life. He's going to put circumstances in your way just to put fear inside of you. Powerhouse Church is not going to stop coming to church. We're going to continue coming to church. We are going to do everything that we can to you know, disinfect, keep it clean. You know, we're going to do all that we can, but we're not going to stop. We're not going to allow, you know, people to say, you can't. Well, you know what? I have a God that says I can. I have a right to come to church and serve God. And we need to throw out that fear. And not saying, well, what about this? What about that? Forget about what about this and what about that. When you were in the world, you didn't care. You know, some of you were doing the dirty. 
Come on. You don't think it's unclean when you're passing that pipe around and a guy has all these sores on his mouth? Well, you didn't care. You wanted to get high. You didn't care if that girl or guy had a reputation. You still hooked it up. <laughs> you're all like, whoa, whoa. Come on now, Steve. Back it up a little bit. Back it up a little bit. Come on now. Keep it PG. Oh, I'm not paying it PG. I'm keeping it real. Too many people get so scared out there that they, they want to stop doing what God called them to do. Here it is right here where Israel was getting punked. Can I put it in that way? They were getting punked left and right. They were surrounded. Kind of sound like the song, huh? They were surrounded by their enemies. They were going in and just saying, okay, I want this, I want that. And they're the Israelites all, okay. Come on now. You know, we need today are mighty men and mighty women of God. We need to start raising up people to, no, you know what? No, forget raising up. We have risen up men and women of God. Our church is not no punk. We're going to go to the highways and the byways. We're going to go out there in those streets and start proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to pass out food. We're going to do what God called us to do, and nothing is going to stop us. I was talking to uh, 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 Rudy Machaca, and you know he was, he was, you know, he, he got to pick his brain. That guy, you know, you know, while you're eating, he 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 gives out a lot of wisdom, you know. And so, you know, I'm picking his brain. He's chomping it up, and you know, he was saying like where that um, we need to get out there. We need to stop being afraid. Too many people are are, are getting scared. From the, of their own shadow. Keep looking to their back and, and, and thinking something's going to jump up on them. They are being taken from every inch of their land. And they started crying out to God. Here they're saying that, you know, God's telling them, well, you, you turned your ways. You, 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 you started serving other gods. You know, we serve the one and true living God. How many times in the Bible does it say, do not fear? How many times does he say, I am with you? But yet we get scared of, of little things. Now, I won't, I, won't, I won't lie to you. I was, you know, scared when I went into that hospital because the devil took away from me. I, he isolated and took away my family that I couldn't see. I was all alone. And you know, when you're all alone, just like they felt they were all alone, they had no protection. You know, that's when the devil really went to work on me. Started to lie to me. Nobody loves you. God abandoned you. You're just laying there. You're going to die. And I remember he used to torment me and, and showing me, as I told last time, you know, my own funeral. Nobody was there, but you know, God is faithful. God is faithful through prayer that we were getting strength in me. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see people praying for me. I felt it. I felt the hand of God. I felt what God was doing to my, I felt him healing me. And I remember when, when my wife would look at me. On the tablet, we're allowed, and I know that she would spend hours reading to me. She would take me on a cruise. She would, you know, take me out and go show me around the house. Look what I did, you know, and I'm like, okay, we're, let's go outside, you know, and I'm like, okay, I see you haven't been taking care of the yard. <laughs> Basically, what she was saying, Steve, when you get better, you got a lot of work to do. But, you know, when she spent that time, and then she started telling me, people are praying for you, Steve. People are believing you're going to be out soon. And oh, my God, here comes the nurses. They would come in and just say, keep it up, Steve. You're doing good. You're going to be out of here. God's got a plan for you. I mean, all of a sudden, all these people started coming and, and encouraging me. And all of a sudden, the fear started to leave. But it wasn't until that night that God touched my hand 
And he said, I am right here with you. I never left you. I never forsake you. I was sitting down right here watching you all this time. And from that moment, that's when, mm, yeah, started messing with the nurses and everybody else. Started joking with them. It's fun because, you know, then when they try to poke you with the needle to draw blood, you know, he's like, ah, ah, and then, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, start laughing. And... But I was surrounded. I felt there was no hope. In verse 11, it says, now the angel of the Lord came and sat underneath the, the, uh, the tree which was in Oprah which belonged to Joab the Amazon there, while his son Gideon threats weed in the wind vine in order to hide it from the Midianites. Oh, how, how, how I felt the presence of God that night. He was sitting right there next to me. Do you know when you're going through your circumstances, when you're going through things, God's right there with you. When you're kneeling at this altar, he's right there kneeling right next to you. When you're on your bed crying, he's right there putting his hand on your hand saying, it's going to be all right, my daughter, my son. It's going to be all right. You're not alone. You don't need to be scared. You don't need to be fearful because I'm right here with you. I conquered fear. And here he is. The angel of the Lord is kicking it right there uh, next to Gideon. But, you know, let me tell you something. What he told him, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor, mighty man of mighty warrior, it says on another translation. He didn't call him by Gideon. He didn't call him by name. He called him mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. You put your name right there because you're a warrior. And I ain't forgetting about the women, because in Judges 4, it talks about a mighty woman named Deborah who stood up and led an army. She was bad. I don't know. I, I kind of see her like 6'5", all buff, you know. Come with me. I wonder if she had a big army, man. You know, I'd be scared, too. But I bet you when I get to heaven, she's going to be a petite little one. She's going to be a little one, you know, and acting all crazy, you know. And But she led Israel to a victory. Mighty warrioress. Mighty warrior, mighty warrioress. Mighty young adult. God's not calling you by name. He's calling you by what he sees. And he sees a mighty warrior. He has risen up mighty warriors in this church. Mighty women of God, he has risen in this church. They're not being risen up. They're here. When we go to the streets, you know, we, 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 and I'll be honest, you're scared. You know, it's okay to be scared. But go and see what God does. If you don't want to go because you don't want to be around anybody, don't go. We don't need you there anyway. Because we need mighty men and women out there that aren't afraid of anything that aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. We used to go to Mexico, and let me tell you something, a lot of those people are not clean. They had diseases on them. They, they were dirty. They smelt because they didn't have the, the uh, uh, right uh, 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 place to take a shower or medical. And, you know, they would come to church, and they, they, they would sit there, and, you know, all these people, they didn't care that they were there. Some did. They would look at them like, you know, oh, God. But they would go up for prayer. And we had a decision to make. Are we going to get be religious and not pray for them? Or are we going to get our hands dirty? And we didn't, hand, hand, we didn't have hand sanitizer back then. But Jesus prayed for any. He prayed for the lepers. Contagious. He prayed for the sick. He prayed for anybody that would come up to him. Who am I to say I'm not going to pray for this person? And there we are praying for these people that smelt, that, that had diseases, and God would heal them. God would supernaturally heal so many people because of our obedience. Here he's calling him mighty man. You mighty warrior. And then the Lord... 
I'm sorry, he said, Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midians. Have I not sent you? Here he is questioning, well, what about back in the day when you were, you know, when you were there? It's not happening today. Lord, you know, you were healing people back then, but, but, but it's not happening today. Lord, miracles happened back in the day, but it doesn't happen today. We need to get out of the mentality of back in the day and start talking about today. Because God is still doing miracles. God is still setting people free. God is still on the, on, uh, saving people. Me up here is a miracle. And, you know, I, and, and I tell people that, and I don't say it to boast at all, because I'm thankful that God gave me another chance. And I'm going to take every minute of it. God, okay, what you want me to do? I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to be like before and, and, and you know, uh, uh, not get involved or not do what you've called me to do. I'm going to do everything you've called me to do because, you know, you could have taken me out. I know I would have been in the glory before you, everybody here. I know I would have been in Jesus' arm before everybody here. But I do remember. <laughs> Come on, brother. But, you know, I'll tell you, we, uh, and, and Belinda can testify that I got really depressed after. Because I started hearing of people that died. And people went on, you know, and, and, and they died of this COVID. And I'm like, why me, God? Why me? Why am I still alive? Why am I still, why, why, didn't, why didn't you just take me out? What, what, what's so special? And as I was reading this, you know, he says, because I'm not done with you, mighty man of God. I'm not done with you yet. And I want you to let this church know he's not done with you either. You point a finger at yourself, God's not done with me yet. He's just beginning. He's just beginning. We're going to see some powerful things coming in in 2021. We're going to curse COVID out of here. We're going to throw it in the lowest pit of pits. But I know that our God is faithful. Just find another scripture here. Excuse me for one moment. Later on, God starts telling him, okay, go take this army. Go take your army. You're going to go defeat your enemies. So he rounds up. There was 22,000 people. But he told him, if there's anybody scared, if there's anybody that, hey, they, they don't want to be a part of this, they can go. So out of that, 10,000 remained. And the Lord said, still too many. Still too many. Still too big. So then he tells them it was, it was a trip. He goes, take them down to the water place. And I'm going to separate them right there. <laughs> he says, this one shall not go with you, and this shall not, this one will so he brought the people down to the river, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, he shall set apart himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down into these to drink. So as they sat down, you know, to drink water, there was some that probably had a little tin cup and looked around, drank. Got some more, looked around, drank. But there was a one that were fearless. That they got down on their knees and they just started, I don't care who's around me. God's got my back. And they're like dogs licking up the water. What that represented was that they were not fearful of the enemy. We need to be like that. Not fearful from the enemy. We don't have to look around and while we're drinking, you know, look around. Is the enemy going to come? No. God's got my back. 
I could drink through however I want. When we go into these um, neighborhoods to, to, to preach, to, to reach out to God, hey, some of them aren't, aren't, aren't uh, um, people friendly. A lot of these places don't like outsiders. We would go into neighborhoods that we, back, you know, during the time, didn't get along. They knew who I was. They know who these people were. Going inside, we weren't even fearful no more. Because we had one mission, and that was to spread the gospel to anybody. And we didn't have to be fearful. When we go into these places, we don't have to be fearful. God's there with us, forward, back, side, and he's even up on top. It's exciting to go to these outreaches. For anybody who wants to be a preacher, for anybody who desires that they want to, you know, do a message and preach, my first pulpit was on that street. That's where it starts. Not up here. It is hard out there on the street because people are just looking at you. Some spit at you. Some tell you you're number one several times. Some will stop and blast music right in front of you while you're trying to uh, uh, get on the bullhorn. The bullhorn is where your first preaching is, your first mic, the bullhorn. I don't know if you saw the video, but you saw a lot of people on the bullhorn. I, you know, there was Sister Rosie blasting away, letting everybody know that we serve a good God. And you know, even if you're going there for the first time, yeah, it's like a promo for our outreach. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's all right. Gold, you just go out there. You don't have to be on the bull, and we're not going to force you to be on it. I know sometimes, you know, I wonder if they're, I remember on our harvesters, our conferences, you know, we didn't, I didn't know the first year, and a lot of us didn't know, and then you know, they started announcing people, like, oh, my God, are they going to announce us? Are they going to announce me to go somewhere to, to the, you know, Africa or something, you know? I, I, didn't, I didn't know, you know, that there was some planning involved in it, you know? So don't be afraid that we're going to tell you, okay, here's a bullhorn, go for it, you know? Just looking like a deer looking in headlights, you know. Uh, no. You know, you could be there saying hi to a little, uh, 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 one of the little children, giving them a balloon, just telling them Jesus loves them, making sure cars are not going by fast, passing out a flyer. There's so much that you can do, and you're still in the, word of, in the will of God, and you're still reaching out to those that... Um, God's called us to, to reach. And all it takes is for us to say, God, here I am. In 1 Samuel 3.10, it says, Now the Lord came and stood and called as, uh, at other, as, as, like other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak. For your servant hears. You know, when I was reading the story about Gideon, and Gideon was just cutting it up with, 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 with the angel of the Lord. You know, he was just cutting it up. I started wondering, did he, was he paying attention that that, that, was, uh, that that was God right there talking to him, right next to him? Because he was just talking to him like, like nothing. And, you know, there's times where we can be like that. God's trying to talk to us, and we're just like, we're just too busy. Yes, Lord. Uh, oh, I got a like there. Okay. Um, you know, we, we take a selfie. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, Lord, you know, I was just asking, you know, uh, you know, that if, um, should we, should we go to out, outreach? Hold on, hold on, Lord. All he's asking for is to hear, your servant speaks. Your servant hears. 
Isaiah 6, 8, he says, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here I am, send me. Lord, I'm open, send me. I don't care who else wants to go, but Lord, I, I, I'll go. I'm, I'm right here. Send me, Lord. I might not jump like I used to, you know, over fences and all, but, you know, I'll get off the ground. My heels will get off the ground. Send me, Lord. Send me, you know. I'll, I can do that. I know that if I, you know, if we get, you know, the rapture hits, it's going to take two angels just to pick me up. That's all right. Mama, let's go, angels. But all he says is, here I am. Send me a willing heart. And I love the part where it says, you know, there, we weren't, you know, there's only 300, as the story went on, that went and took, and took on these, all these enemies. Only 300. Our church isn't a mega church. But our church, our church does stuff more than a mega church does. There's a saying that we used to say back in the day, but I won't say it. Okay? But we were, we, you know, there was not many of us, but we put on a fight. You know, you, you go, you know, you're going to go throw blows. You know, you don't take the whole army. You know, you took the, like two guys because they're the craziest. You know, and so, hey, let's, let's go. Go fight my battles. And, you know, they were like this, too, you know. Here I am, send me, Lord. I'm willing, God. Send me, Lord. Where's the need at, Lord? Oh, toilet's backed up back there. Oh, okay, Lord, I think that's, uh, what's his name's ministry? No. If there's a need, Lord, send me. I'll, I'll, I'll clean it because I'm doing it upon the Lord. I'm clean. That my first, was, was my first ministry. Cleaning toilets. And they're like, well, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm <laughs> cleaning it. You know, I'll clean it like, man, if Lord sat down on it, he'd be pleased. <laughs> but too many, they'll just like, yeah, okay. I'm done. There's no halfway in the house of God. There's needs. There's needs. Lord, use me wherever. You know, many, many, you see a lot of the leaders, they did not start from the pulpit or, or, or just being in leadership just like that. Not one of them. They started at the bottom and, you know, they, they cleaned toilets too. Vacuumed. Moved chairs around. Prepared the church for everybody to come. First one's there, last one's to leave. God saw their faithfulness. See, God will see what you do when nobody else sees. Sometimes, you know, we want to be seen. And I think that's why even like, like, like Facebook and all them, Instagram, you know, devil said, oh, I'm going to have a field day with that one. I want to record when I'm when I'm giving this money to this poor person, here, 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 poor person, here, here, here's, here's, hold on. Here's two, here's two cheeseburgers. And a large Coke. I went out for you, brother. Here you go. God bless you. You know, we're out here in the streets. Come on now. The other, the other day, you know, um, you know, my, my, my wife's really like, she's one of them, like, she's real giving. So when she sees a homeless person, she wants to give them money. And, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm all for that. I'm, I'm cool with that. I go, I just don't make it a habit of doing it, you know, all the time. Because some of them, you know, come on now, you're sporting some nice shoes there. Okay, brother. You, you know. But, you know, there's times that I do and stuff, but. This one time she wanted to give this one homeless guy some money. And, you know, the, 
you know, I, 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 I said the godly thing, you know. I said, oh, no, no, think so. <laughs> what are you doing? No, no, just give, I, I, no, 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 look, 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 look. This, not, not this time, okay, just don't. So the guy starts walking back, you know, and I'm right there, and I'm just like, oh, my God. I started getting convicted. And it's like, wow, some, you know, that ain't right, you know. So I'm like reaching in my pocket, like, okay, if he comes back, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to him. Well, homeboy never came back. And so, you know, this this really weighed heavy on me. And so, as as I, you know, I went to went went somewhere to grab some to eat for for me and my wife one night, and I ordered a little extra. I, I was just a little more. She was a little bit more hungry than than norm than normal. <laughs> I wasn't. I had a salad. And so <laughs> and so I was gonna eat <laughs> I was gonna eat it on the way home. So she wouldn't know. You know, and so I'm right there and, and there's this person in the trash digging out stuff. And then I remembered what she wanted to do. And I go, this is an opportunity just to give somebody something back. And I asked, Hey, are, are you hungry? Duh. And they looked, and they go, I'm starving. And I'm like, you know what? The Lord President would give this to you. Here. <laughs> to God. No, I actually, you know, here. May God bless you. And what really touched me was that it, the face they made, like, just so grateful. It was just so grateful. And I understand now why my wife does that. Because a lot of them look so grateful doing what they do. That's what we're called to do. Feed the homeless. As I close, God is looking at you, but not by your name. He sees a mighty warrior. A mighty warrior. We're going to do things. Because today we have mighty men and women in our church. What happened before, great. But we're going to do new things. We have new ideas. And we're going to reach the lost. I want to leave you with one last scripture. As the worship team comes up, Matthew 25, 31 says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did you see, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and gave you drink? When did you we see you a stranger and take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did you we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. And then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me. You cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? And then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, and as so much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me.
And these will go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The difference is, is what they did and didn't do. God didn't just call us to be mighty warriors to let somebody else do it. He called us mighty warriors and warrioresses to do it. Warriors bad. Look it up. They're bad. So as we have every head bowed and every eye closed, I I, want to just ask a question. Are you the one that says, here I am, Lord? Am I, are you the one that says, speak, your servant hears? Are you the one that went out to the highways and the byways? Or the ones that didn't? I know all this, what's going on is fearful. Fear is an emotion. But when we know who we serve, he takes away that fear. So tonight, you know, if you're fearing what's going on, maybe something even in your life, there's some fear in there. Or maybe there's something that's just not right and you're like I'm just tired of being tired I hear people that that live in fear you know they're always they, they get tired of it too they get tired of being fearful tonight I, I want an extended invitation one that I did many years ago and that invitation was to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior The day I did that, I know that I was living in fear. I know I was living in doubt. I was living in anger. I was, I was a messed up uh, guy at that time. But I know once I laid uh, my head down at the altar and I cried out to God and I asked him into my heart, my life changed. Tonight, I want to give you that opportunity. Do you want to change? Maybe you're hearing God calling you. It's time. It's time, brother. It's time, sister, no more. You don't need to live the way you do. I got a better plan. Are you tired? Is there anybody in here that hasn't given their life to God and says, you know what? Tonight, I want to surrender to Jesus. I'm tired of being tired. Is there anybody here? All you have to do is just raise your hand and we will pray for you. Is there anybody here? Is there anyone here? Praise God. Praise God. Is there anybody here? Let's say, I'll surrender. I'll surrender. I see that hand. I see that hand, sister. After tonight, your life will not be the same. I guarantee you that. Is there anybody else that would be honest? As our sister and say, you know what, I, I, need, I, I, I need to surrender too. I'm tired. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Amen. Sister, I'm going to ask you one more thing. And this is not to embarrass you because we've all done it. I want to ask you, will you meet me at this altar so that I can have the privilege of praying with you? Would you be able to come up here? Come on, everybody.
repeating after me. Church, can you repeat this prayer? Dear Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Take away all the pain, all the hurts, everything that's in me, I give you. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for writing my name down in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear sister is going to pray for you. And today is going to be the beginning of a new life. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. There's some people here that, that and I'm not going to, I'm not going to call you out as, you know, just to come up, because it's between you and God, but there's some people here that are fearful. You're living in fear. Lay it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. Don't just go back and, okay, I'm still scared. No, you got the King of Kings, Lord of Lords on your side. There's some of you that, they don't feel you're a mighty warrior, a mighty woman of God. You don't feel it. But did you know that where Gideon was from, the neighborhood he was from, was the smallest clan. It was the smallest. You may feel like, I don't got a lot to offer. And that's all right, because that little bit, can conquer armies. That little bit can conquer. You don't need to have a lot. But the little you have, God will use. And there's some of you that are holding back. You're holding back from what God's been calling you. He's been calling you. But you've been taking too many selfies. Stop them selfies. And start hearing the voice of God. These altars are open. We're going to pray for people. If you just need...